Welcome to Nepi Invest the World. Today I'm going to be diving into LTM's full year results for this year. A um, bit of disclosure here, I have been an LTM shareholder, or I was an LTM shareholder for the best part of about four years or so, up until recently when I changed super funds. My old super fund had to sell out of my all my shareholdings and I uh, haven't quite bought back into quite a few of those holdings yet. I've been looking for a good time to buy back into Altium because I do think they have room for growth in the future from even though they are at lofty lofty valuations right now, but um, I do think they have room to grow, but I don't think they're going to grow at the same rate as they have been the last uh, 10 years or so. So let's have a look at their results today. First of all, uh, what does Altium do? Uh, simply enough, they just provide printed circuit boards, design software for the engineers who do that sort of thing. Uh, that's about as far as I'm going to talk about what they do. And one of their software programs, whatever it is uh, called, is LTM Designer, and it's considered the industry leader in the segment. They have another um, software package, which I think is called LTM 365. It's just new. So they are expanding uh, the offerings they do have. They have uh, recurring revenue and non-recurring revenue, and I hope that the non the, the recurring revenue uh, increases in time. I think it's about sixty percent now, and I think by two thousand twenty-five, they hoping it's going to be eighty percent of their revenue. Now, uh, LTM uh, has been around for quite a while, but uh, it's only been the last ten years that they've really gone through in a phenomenal, a phenomenal growth story um, trajectory. I've seen a lot of people, you know, analysts saying, if only you could find the next Altium or the next Appen or the next A2 Milk, because some of these uh, growth numbers are pretty phenomenal. So revenue is growing from 45 million to 268 million. The CAGR is just the compound annual growth rate. So if you look at uh, just the share price growth rate, it's gone from 11 cents in 2011 to $35.85 this year. And that's a 90% growth rate. Um, so if you just held, if you didn't believe in diversification, you just held Altium for the last nine, 10 years or so, you've uh, made 90% per year. And I don't think anyone can complain about that. And then market caps uh, increased by 98% per year, gone from a micro cap, 9 million to a, for, you know, a large cap almost, $4.2 billion in market cap, uh, so the discrepancy between the market cap growth rate and the share price growth rate, they should be similar if all things are equal, but they've increased the shares on issue, and that's why you're seeing the market cap increasing a little bit more than the share price, because there's a little bit more shares on issue. So let's have a go, I'll look at the uh, financial statements. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the profit and loss first. So Revenue up by 10%, EBITDA is 13.2, EBITDA margin, quite important. Uh, they like to look at that and the revenue growth for the rule of 50. So the margin there is 40%, uh, profit before tax is 12.2%. The impact is minus 41.6. And this is a, one of the reasons I prefer to look at something like cash flow, operating cash flow, before looking at impact. So there's a one-off thing, income tax expense, uh, the FD2 or FDII, I think it is, which is the foreign derived intangible income in the United States. So all these numbers you're seeing in their, in their financial statements is uh, US dollars. So that's a one thing to take, take into account. So it's a one-off income tax expense. If you look at income tax expense on the right there, they've gone from 4.7 million to 33.8 million. So it's a large increase in ta income tax expense. It's a one-off, that's why the net profit after tax has gone down. And the normalized earnings per share has gone up 5%. So some of those numbers um, aren't that large for their valuations. So um, in fact, if I was just looking at these numbers, I would say uh, they're probably well overvalued right now. But I think the growth story ahead, they're fairly bullish with their growth. And the rule of 50 is something, I'll do a YouTube video on the rule of 50. They're advocates of this rule of 50. If you just add the revenue to the EBITDA margin, uh, that's 50%. You can see it's 50.1%. And uh, the expectations for our team is to have that rule of 50 above 50 going forward. And um, they seem to be you know, quite strong advocates of that rule of 50. 
Uh, I'll just go to the, the presentation and I'll just look at the um, balance sheet here. So the main things to look at here is um, they've increasing their cash and no debt on their balance sheet. Um, another thing, I'm less bullish. I'm not, you know, that's why I haven't rushed in and bought back in. You can just see the net assets down the bottom, which is the equity. Has it increased year on year from last year to this year? So it has been increasing. This year's the first year hasn't really decreased. And there is a few things how why that is. Nothing to be too concerned with yet, but um, we want to see that increasing with time eventually. And uh, the next one is just the cash flow on the right, just the dividends on the left. I'm not really concerned with the dividends. It's a low dividend yield stock, this company. They have increased their dividends quite consistently through the years. But uh, the main thing here is the operating cash flow has been going up, but it has gone down from last year to this year. I think their working capital has uh, decreased. So that's one of the reasons why we see a little bit of discrepancy there. Free cash flow has gone down too. Um, but they're still able to uh, increase their cash, even though they're still paying dividends. So no, no debt either. So they've paid off a little bit of borrowings there, but uh, no debts on the balance sheet. And this uh, slide just shows you uh, what things are bringing in the revenue. So the biggest revenue drivers is their Altium design. I mentioned that's their product, their industry leader, maintenance subscription. And the blue stuff there on the right, that's the non-recurring revenue. So they want to decrease, decrease that in time. And the recurring revenue, which Altium Designer is a part of, they want to increase that in time. And then on the far left, you see Altium Designer 365. It's something they've just brought in. It's only had two months revenue, but that should be increasing in time, hopefully. So the main drivers of the revenue is Altium Designer. Um, and one of the reasons I'm quite bullish, they uh, I like what they do here. So they've on the right, they've got a 2021 to 2025 plan of attack. So they've done this uh, ever since I've followed them. Um, and you can see uh, the revenue and revenue growth, EBITDA and EBITDA margins. So they're looking at uh, the revenue growth uh, being probably at the lowest point next year and then increasing as they move towards uh, the goal of $500 million in revenue by 2025 and 100,000 subscribers. And even the EBITDA margin, they're hoping that gets towards 40 to 45% by 2025. So uh, in keeping with their um, a rule of 50, that's well over 50. So I think this is the main reason um, I'm quite bullish is I like companies to have goals. I like management to have goals. They got very close to their goals for 2020. So their goals have always been 200 million, 50,000 subscribers. They got close. I think uh, COVID-19 was, um, I suppose, uh, one of the reasons why they didn't quite get there. And they also mentioned that COVID-19, there is a bit of delay in reaching their achievements. And on the right, far right there, you can see by 2025, they want 80% of their revenue to be recurring and 68% of the revenue to be electronic design. So, so um, yeah, so going forward, I'm quite bullish, but um, if we look at the next slide, some key valuation ratios, they are very expensive. So PA ratio 104.5, that's expensive no matter what. So they really need that growth rate to justify uh, their price at the moment, uh, price to book ratio 17.5. Typically for value plays, I look at 1.5 and less, even two and less, uh, one for deep, less than one for deep value plays. So this is not a value company at all. This is definitely a growth company and it, enterprise value divided by operating cash flow 55.6. Again, I look at, uh, comp look at numbers below six for good deep value plays, numbers below 10, uh, just for value plays, so they're well above that. So the key thing about this is they need the growth to justify their share price. If they don't have any, you know, if that growth slows down for any reason, their share price is going to take a battering. So there is a bit of risk there, um, but uh, if they uh, do achieve their goals, I think by two, tw 2025, I think these numbers will be um, a little bit lower but they will be justified. The last one was, I just don't want to know what sort of the growth rate is in PCB market. 
And there are, this is, I just did find this one quote there. Expected to grow by 10.85 billion US dollars uh, in the next four or five years, which is only a growth rate of about 3% or just over 3% during that period. So not a lot of growth there, but Tautium is the leader in this space, or one of the leaders in this space. I think uh, based off what they've done in the past 10 years or so, they might be able to contain that leading that lead, but there are some risks involved, uh, whether they can maintain that lead. There's also those risks, it's like some of their talent leaves the company, maybe forms their own company or goes to a competitor, uh, that sort of thing, or one of the competitors creates a new software that um, is better than the old the LTM software. So a bit of risk, especially because of their valuation. I'll be looking for, I was hoping a decrease in share price was gonna happen. I'm not looking at their charts now. There's nothing really to point out with their charts uh, for, since the past year. It hasn't really done much. I could look past uh, the ten past 10 years, but you can just imagine if the share price has gone from $0.11 cents to $35, uh, it's just been an uptrend. So that's all for Nippy Invest the World for today. Just one disclaimer before I leave. I'm not a financial advisor. So I just did the presentation for, um, for entertainment purposes to learn a little bit about this company myself. If you do need some financial advice, make sure you speak to a professional. And that's it for today. Hope to speak to you later. Have a good day and enjoy uh, the rest of the week.